honestly, we're well into prep um, for North Carolina on this thing. We've been prepping the whole time uh, with bits and pieces of the practices that we've been doing. Also been developmental practices and really getting the young guys some really good work and really good development in the first couple weekends. And then obviously we practice three days in a row here um, this week. And now with finals being done and signing date behind us, now we can really turn our attention. It'll all be kind of game plan practices from here um, all the way through when we get down uh, to Annapolis too uh, with that. So obviously a worthy uh, opponent. I mean, UNC is a good football team and we're excited about playing them in a great bowl. And I think I've said this to a couple people is that I'm really excited personally. I've never been to Washington, D.C. in my entire life. Um, so, and my kids haven't either. I think my wife went once when she was young. So. Uh, be excited to see that. I know some of the guys are from there on the team. Uh, so might be old hat to them, uh, but very excited uh, overall about the bowl game with uh, trying to send these seniors out on the right note. Um, they've been through a lot here. They've accomplished a lot here and really trying to send them out on the right note and set ourselves up for next year with some good uh, momentum going into the off season. Okay, so with that, we can talk about uh, the guys we signed yesterday. I'm really ecstatic with the class. It was a lot of hard work by a lot of people. And really, it was still a short cycle, guys. It's normally about an 18-month cycle to recruit a class. And this was about 11 months for us. So we were still a little short, but I thought we did a great job of getting in with these coaches, getting in with the area people identifying, evaluating, and then building the relationships with these guys that we have today. And um, there were a couple guys that came late to us that, all, that always happens, in, at, you know, in signing day. And uh, in a perfect world, you wouldn't want that, but it's never a perfect world. So you're always gonna usually have that. Um, so with that, we can open it up for questions. I can go through these guys individually, or you guys can ask questions. How do you guys wanna do it? You guys are just guys, like off your game. Talking about the bowl game and the end of the regular season, do you self scout the end of the regular season with, with players and say, okay, this is what we need to work on for the bowl specifically? Or how does that work? Yeah, well, yes, it ends up trickling into the bowl game, but really what we do is we self scout for the entire thing, positionally and personnel. And then we trickle that down into the game for this. So we're, we're yeah, I mean, Listen, we had a lot of things to juggle, you know, on this thing. We were, you know, our team, uh, 20s, 21s, um, you know, the portal we're recruiting, and then we're getting ready for a bowl game too and self-scouting. So we're not done with that yet. That's part of this developmental process too. So, but it does trickle down by the time you get to a bowl game, it does get to that point. Ron, when you look at your class, you've, you've gotten, it looks like four safeties, which are probably all top athletes and maybe could even move around. Was that, was that one of the strengths here uh, of, this, of this class, that position? Yeah, well, and also a point of need with what we're losing, right? So, and that's probably, the skill positions are probably guys that can play a little bit earlier uh, than like an old lineman where you put them in the oven and cook them. But yeah, they can also, like Trey Blair is a guy that, I mean, He's really good with the ball in his hands, too. So we'll see how that we'll start him at safety and then see where it goes. But, um, and you know, Jalen Ware there, the transfer that we took, he's, you know, he's a guy that, you know, we're, he's played college football, albeit at junior college. Uh, we're expecting him to get into the mix there. And then Garrett and Alex, I mean, I really like those guys. We've had those guys for a while. And again, good athletes. I think there's a couple positions each of those guys could play. But that's a starting point. Yeah, are these safeties, um, you know, are they traditional safeties or are they, they maybe fit in, right? Sam Franklin's spot is a safety we'll linebacker. We'll see. Right now we're going to start them, you know, field and boundary. And really in college football today, Sam's position is a safety position, yeah. even though it might be listed as a linebacker. It's really listed or uh, it really is developing into a safety um, position. So we'll see. But those, that's where we're going to start those guys. Okay, let's go through this. I knew you were going to ask. So Nick is, okay. Um, Trey is. Sam Davis is. Um, 
uh, Darian Barner is, Miles is, Nazir, and Jalen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's what I thought. Seven was the number. I knew I had it. I had one screwed up for you. What does it mean to get a kid like, like Trey Blair that, that late in the game? Well, you know, I know it feels late, and it certainly was not ideal timing, uh, but that's one of those things you do in recruiting is you recruit past your commits um, because you don't know what's going to happen. And, um, you know, Trey was a guy, um, and you have to be careful with that because you don't want to lead kids on too. Like this is about relationships and being honest and fair with people. And um, so we kind of recruited him from afar, probably a little more than up close, just to be fair to the young man. Because at the time we didn't have a spot. Um, then a spot came open, and then you go in. And then that's the late part, right? That's the part that um, everyone sees as, oh, you, you took him late, and I was like, well, you, you better, we've had a relationship with him. Well, speaking of that, do you have any openings like for the later period? I do, I do. I'm not gonna put that out there, how many spots, but I, I got some that uh, we're, gonna, um, we're gonna look for, for some positions here um, uh, of need is really now, and this is really what I call the first sign of day is really filling in your roster, you know, foundational piece. Second signing day to me has turned in and do a need date. As a coach, do you feel kind of settled in with how things are now as opposed to how it used to be with just everything crashing out in February? Oh, we were just talking about that. The, the one good thing about the old schedule uh, was that there was a finality to it, right? You know, you, you had everything buttoned up, sewn up, and then you kind of moved forward. Um, and you didn't have the crossover with the bowl game. I like the early signing date. I think the kids like it too. Um, I think having that unsettled during the holidays for the recruits and the coaches and the team, I think that was really hard for a lot of years with the way things sped up. So. Um, I like it this way. Yeah. How about Hawkins? He comes in late too, along with his teammate. Yep, yep, no doubt. And we're, you know, really, I mean, dude runs a 10-3. You know, he um, offers to, you know, I think, well, no, I don't think I know, he had an offer to go down and run track at Texas and uh, wanted, to play, wanted to play football. You know, so um, just really excited about him. I mean, 10-3 is fast, you guys, like fast in the hundred. I mean, that's not, you know, like guys who run 10-7 are fast. A 10-3, that's fast. Well, what about Matthew Duncan? The quarterback always gets yeah. a lot of look. How about your, your thoughts on him? Well, we've liked him all along. When we saw him this spring and evaluated him on his junior film, I mean, I must have watched maybe only five minutes of it, and I said, that's a guy that can really run our offense. He has the skill sets we're looking for. Then obviously, we dug into it, watched all the film, got him up here, he drove up here on his own dime. And that's the real key piece with quarterbacks is when you get around them, you know, how does it fit, the personality fit? Um, and just, he has a brother that's a starting quarterback at Western Kentucky, his dad's a football guy, he's a football guy, it was just, it was easy. It was like talking to old friends. And so um, when we did that, we offered him, and then he, he committed, and which was good because I think he felt the same fit on that thing. Had you looked at him before going around the line, Bob? No. Okay. No, had not. He, he did, they did not. They kind of changed their offense. They didn't pass as much this year. Yeah. But, he, but he also – does he have that dual threat that you like? He does. He does. You know, I think you always look for in a quarterback for – or at least I do – I look for in a quarterback first. He's got to be able to throw it. And he's got to be able to throw it well and execute it on time, on delivery with good footwork, and have good arm strength. Past that, then, the very next thing is what is his mobility? And uh, he is an excellent athlete. So I don't think he's going to come in and run a 4-5. I don't think he's that type of dual threat guy. But he's going to be a guy that can move the sticks with his feet. And... Uh, that certainly gives defenses all sorts of headaches when you have that. When Nazir Burnett left Georgia Tech, you know, the story that was written was, hey, he wanted to go home, small family. Was that, in a sense, an easy-ish type? 
sell? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, we're here, right? And he wanted to go home. So, I mean, he's a tight family. Yeah, you know, there again you go to, absolutely we had everything that each other were looking for, right? We wanted to get a wide receiver in that class, which turned out perfectly. Um, and he wanted to get close to home, uh, but then you had to get there, get around him. And once you got around him, he was a great guy and really happy with him. Well, would he be eligible right away? Or? I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it, you're going to have to do a waiver on that. And uh, with all the mitigating circumstances and things that were going on with his family, you know, I don't ever presume to say anything about the NCAA because I had no idea. As of now, you don't have a, a, a back in this class. Does that kind of say as much about what you think of the guys that, you know, the, the people haven't seen yet, whether it's Sadie, whether it's Roy, whether it's Neely coming off an injury? Is that kind of... Yeah, I remember I told... Well, and I don't know if we got into it a whole ton talking about it, but really some unknowns in the running back room, right? And then, unfortunately, Gardner goes down, right? And, you know, your heart goes out to him. He's a senior and his career is over that way. But what that allowed us to do was really get a good understanding of who these next guys are and the guys waiting in the wings. Feel real good about Ruley. Um, Ed Sadie, obviously Dobbins is not back in the mix, obviously in these practices and really competing. And we've gotten Onassis Neely back on the field. Now he's not full go yet, he's not in the team, but he's back practicing with some individual stuff. So I feel good about that group and where they can go. Um, now that never to say that uh, if the right guy out there um, that can make a difference, you, you're always on alert for that, right? Uh, Darius Pittman left Purdue like the first week of September. You, you, you know, the latest guy, at least in terms of what we saw news popping up here. I mean, that must have been kind of, and you, I assume, were not looking yeah. until. Well, when Kenny left, um, obviously, uh, you know, we kind of kicked it into gear about, you know, we need to replace that body. And we feel real good about James. Uh, you know, he's going to be a really good player here. But there again, he's a freshman, plays, you know, online scrimmage at times. Those guys take a while to get put them in the oven and cook them. Um, so we kind of kicked it into high gear, and that's with the portal. I think someone back here was talking that uh, – so you look in the portal and you see what's out there and we evaluated every tight end that was in the portal and came out with what we were specifically looking for. He fit us. Uh, he was the number one guy and got in touch with him and got him here um, on a visit because recruiting guys like that is way different than recruiting high schoolers, right? They've been through it. They know what they're looking for. They're leaving for one reason or another. He was a really mature guy who, you know, was real honest about the situation at Purdue. The coaches and him still have a great relationship, uh, which is something I look for. Uh, you know, did you leave under duress or did you leave under good circumstances? He left under good circumstances. And uh, his skill set's exactly what we need. In fact, it's probably, a, you know, a little bit more of the skill set that we need than we had um, this year with those guys. Now, not to mention, DMR will get there, you know what I mean? But so young in their career, a little more hand in the dirt, tight end, they can really, you know, be on that line of scrimmage. He didn't, he only had a couple of catches in his career. Is that something that, that has to still evolve in his game? Or, or was it opportunities or? Yeah, yeah, well, I think both. I think, you know, they had a guy that they like to throw to a little more tight end than him. He's got to grow in that. Um, because you have to have that threat as a tight end. You don't need to, uh, you know, like with Kenny, in most catches and most yards he ever had in his career, you know what I mean? So, you know, you had to be that threat. You know, he was that threat, and DMR is that threat. You have to have it, but it doesn't need to be a 35 catch year. You know, it can be, we've had all league tight ends before in the past with 15 catches because they put their hand on the dirt block and then still be that threat key situation. What do you mean to flip a guy like Kobe Wilson, a guy who had an offer from Georgia? Boy, that one was, uh, boy, you want to, you, you, I can't wait for you guys to meet Kobe, first off. One of the most mature kids that I've ever recruited. Um, you know, really just has a way about him, communicates very well, very honest, very open. You know, sometimes I think 18-year-olds, when you talk to them, 
uh, they might be afraid to say something if they say it wrong. You know, this is that's not Kobe. Um, this kid is, you know, laser focused on what he wants to do. And with the changeover at Memphis, we, again, we've been recruiting him the whole time. Uh, you know, when he committed to Memphis, we kept recruiting him just from the simple fact of we recruited him before he committed. So we kept going, and then the changeover at Memphis felt like, well, let's let's see. And so the guys went down there, um, saw him, saw his mom, saw him, saw his uncle, and then, uh, you know, Got him to come up here to visit. Mom was a wonderful lady. Uh, and then he goes home off the, after the visit. And then, uh, you know, we start hearing over the, the Twitterverse that, you know, he got an offer from Georgia. And we're like, oh boy, here we go. Um, but, you know, just talked to him. And we talked it through. And at that point, that wasn't me going, no, no, don't do that. Listen, he's a kid from Georgia and Georgia offered. Kobe, you have to be comfortable with your decision. What I want for you is for you to make the best decision for you. And that's what I, that's honestly what I told the kid. And um, he got back to me and he said, Coach, I'm signing with you guys. And so obviously we were excited, but real mature kid. Kobe said that um, a big decision, a big deciding factor is the fact that you know, Georgia sends a lot of linebackers to the NFL, but so does Temple. And what does it mean, I guess, to you know have the program be that competitive with an SEC team? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, that's awesome that he feels that way. And I think that's very, very true with our linebackers and with these three coming out right now. Uh, you know, I think we're right in there with anybody in that discussion. So it's a, uh, it's a compliment. It's flattery and uh, certainly like that. Is international recruiting likely to continue for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we got miles, um, you know, it's one of those things where we got the group that uh, comes over and, um, uh, you know, every year they do kind of a camp tour. And we get to, to have good live evaluations and then live evaluations, guys, are where this thing is at. You know, you get that film, you know what's going on on the film, and then you get your hands on them live. And when you do that, then you know, and that was Miles. How, how is he? Like, what? what, what? Is he, is he a raw player? Uh, very, very raw. I mean, I don't think you can sit here and say anybody from Europe is not raw. Right. They're just behind in, in football over there, all over. But he's got the things that you look for, you know, being 6'5", 282, and he looks like he probably weighs 215. You know, I mean, it's just he's an enormous guy that is going to be, I mean, gets over here and eats and trains and stuff. I mean, Really huge. Did you say 215 or 50? He looks like he's 215. Oh, really? Yeah. And he's 280. It's like, what? Yeah. So, but yeah, we will continue. In your mind, I know it's early, but are there any of these guys that you think have a, have a chance to make an impact or is it just? Yes. I mean, you look, you, I always do this. I look at the skill guys. And that's a little easier to get on the field earlier at the skill positions. The further away from the ball you are, the easier it is to play usually. But I say that, and you know, I think Nick Baggs has a chance, you know, to get maybe into that too deep. And um, you know, it's going to be a tough thing to crack because we had some good players there. But uh, you know, with losing Karamo, right? You're losing a guy that played a lot, so there's opportunity. And we got other guys, Chris Banks and Kevin, that's uh, going to be in there too. But I think he could be a guy because he's already 280. You know what I mean? He'll come in semester, and hopefully, we'll rearrange some of that 280 and get him up a little bit. Hey, Rod. So when Fran left and went to Rutgers, you know, some people thought the sky was falling a little bit. Did the mm -hmm. You know, Sky didn't fall, but how uh, you know, was that? I, I said this uh, about that, and, uh, you know, I said it to everybody, is that, you know, we were sad to see Fran go. We all liked Fran. Um, he made a decision that was best for his family, and uh, we supported him in that. Um, because you always want guys to grow in their profession, right? You never want to hold a guy back. That's kind of the natural attrition. But in the end, um, you know, with all due respect to all of them, and me included, all the assistant coaches, head coaches, there are so many people waiting to take my job. No one's irreplaceable. And uh, certainly we didn't feel 
like the sky was falling. We kept looking up and it was still there. So, Was he particularly, though, you know, vital in terms of you talked about there was a 12-month ramp-up rather than an 18-month ramp-up for what you know, but, boy, he might have helped right at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, class. yeah, yeah, the familiarity, like Gabe, you know, Ed, um, Fran, and A.D., you know, those four guys in the beginning were really, really instrumental in going out and meeting people. You know what I mean? They're, but from there, the workload, I always say this, I know, I don't, I don't know how it works on other steps, but we all recruit every day and that doesn't stop. So there's not one guy doing it or, you know, these group of guys doing it. We're all recruiting every day. So after that initial thing, we dug, we all dug. Are you, are you close to a decision on replacing him or, or is that? Yeah, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move uh, Brett Dearson on the field, okay, is the fifth guy. And then I'm gonna hire um, an off the field guy here is what I'm doing uh, on that. So I got it, you know, we gotta work through some HR things. You gotta be respectful of Temple's HR and, you know, working through and working hand in hand with them. So it'll be a little bit before that. Um, we can do all the paperwork stuff. So he's expected to be the 10th the assistant. Yep, yep, yep. He's going to go on. Coach, you mentioned the, um, the, with Jagger going down the running back room and looking ahead to this bowl game, does that affect your game plan? Or are you, or like, where, where are you looking with what you see from UNC as far as your uh, offense or defensive perspective? Like, what do you think about UNC? Ahead of this game? Okay, so let's, there's a lot right there. So give me a second, okay? So running backs. So the plan will be, um, what it was at UConn, you know, Tavon Rue is in there, and then you got a good competition going on behind that with uh, Dobbins and Sadie, uh, you know, and Mike Mitchell's jumping in there right now, Johnny Forrest is jumping in there. That This practice has really caused that competition to really take hold. So tomorrow will be a big day game plan wise, see who can retain all that. That's the next step to that competition and see who becomes that third guy. That will be the plan that way. UNC obviously has a fantastic quarterback, true freshman quarterback, um, that is, you know, he, everyone always says he's going to be a good player. You say that because he's a freshman. He's a good player right now. Um, they have really dynamic skill. I think they're really big up front on the offense. And, um, you know, they run that ball. And then their backs are just outstanding. They're really good backs. Uh, I don't like doing comparisons but they have similar characteristics to the backs from Cincinnati, okay, on that. And then defensively, you know, they're an aggressive style defense that's gonna go ahead and manipulate its front um, and its secondary and really get in your face in all levels. You know, sometimes you'll see backers up on line of scrimmage, sometimes you'll see safeties up on the line of scrimmage. You'll see all these different guys in press and off on the outside. So they're super aggressive on defense and they run to the ball. Uh, extremely well, which is something that uh, you always look for. So it's a really well coached team, which you'd expect. Um, and it's going to be a, a heck of a challenge uh, for us in every way, shape or form. But, uh, you know, like I said, the focus has been on us so much right now. Now tomorrow will be game plan game in there. You mentioned the, the skill, younger skill players have a chance to, you know, make an impression. Yeah. Right? Um, how do you think Zane Baines will fit in the uh, wide receiver room? Yeah, he, he's got a chance uh, to get in there, right? Because you, first off, you play a lot of wide receivers. It's not a like quarterback, right? But you play one of them. Um, you play a lot of wideouts, and he has good just God-given speed. So those two things. Now, he's got to learn it all, and, he, you know, that's a whole transition at wide receiver. You know, that's a little undervalued at wide receiver, learning all the nuances of that position. Uh, everyone always talks about how technical the O-line is. Well, the wideout position is a real technical thing too. Um, so he'll have a learning curve there, but uh, I, he's got a chance. What was Eric Morrison's recruitment? He committed to you guys before you even saw the campus, and obviously yeah. came in recently and recruited him before, but what does it mean to get him and still kind of have a little bit of a, have a recruiting footprint in Chicago? Yeah, well, we want to be, you know, uh, reaching there as well into that Midwest area. Um, there's just good football and a lot of it, right? Uh, with the Merrick, we had, now that's one you asked earlier, had we been, been recruiting him when we were, yes, we'd been recruiting him when we were at Northern um, and have a real good relationship with uh, uh, Coach 
and uh, he, the Phillips, they do an unbelievable job. I don't know if you guys, you guys probably don't know the story of that, but it was a startup school, and you know, it's in the City League, and no City League had ever won a state championship until they did it, now they've won two. Um, he, just an unbelievable program, and, and really good leadership from the top down up there. So with the Merrick, it was one of those things where he did want to come out early and see it. And, you know, I kind of told him, I want you to come on the weekend when all the committed guys are coming. Because you can come out to Philly and see it, but you ain't going to be with anybody else. And, uh, and he thought about that and then committed and then came out. And he had a whale of a time. And his mom and dad were out here too with us. And his dad's been to Philly quite a few times, but he said, I ain't been to Philly 15 years. It's changed. And I go, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, can, can you talk about the, the benefits of playing in a bowl game? Not only extra practice, the effects it has on recruiting and, and all that. And Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to get on my soapbox here for a little bit. Because this national rhetoric about bowl games don't matter is a bunch of bunk. Okay? Plain and simple. You know what that is? And, and no, no offense to anybody in here. But anybody writes that stuff, okay? You guys have not played football then because it means a ton to the football players. End of story there. Like I went to college to play bowl games. That's why I went. I loved watching that with my dad when I was young. I loved seeing it and it meant the world to me and it means the world to these kids today. Like the people who write that stuff, it's, you know, they don't like the name of a bowl game. I'm sorry you don't like the name of a bowl game, right? I mean, it's still football. It's fun to play. Like, you got, you know, Sean Bradley. I'll use him as an example. He's a leader on our team. He cannot wait to play football. And you know what his thought is? Here, here's just the opposite of the way the National Rhetoric goes. He's like, I might not ever get to play another game. There's no football guaranteed after this. So think about that. Everyone's like, well, no, people shouldn't play in the bowl games. Right? Because of the NFL. There's no guarantee, even if you're a draft pick, you'll ever play in another football game. So, I, you know, I don't like that national rhetoric. You gave me the opportunity. I took it, Mark, so I apologize. No, no, but um, besides that, um, what else to the program for the benefit? Yeah. Extra practices, yes. recruiting? So we will get 15 practices in. That's the same amount of practices you get in spring ball. So it's like doubling up a spring ball. Now, some of them get real specific into game plan, so you probably get only about nine real developmental ones, which is really good for your team. Uh, the recruiting side of it, obviously, you know, recruits, they, like my daughter, she's done on Friday with school for two weeks. Well, a lot of those kids aren't playing, but they're done for two weeks. They're gonna sit around, they're gonna watch a bowl game, and we're gonna be on. So that's a big time exposure for us. And, Flip it now to Temple specifically, okay? Um, there isn't a long tradition here of a lot of bowl games. Like, this is a big deal to us, and we do not get lost on that at all. We're trying to build this thing into a situation where, um, you know, we can stack them up on top of each other. we got double digits in a row, bowl games and things like that, which a lot of other programs have. We don't yet, so we're, yeah, all that stuff. Recruiting also, I mean, not only, um, you know, for, you're already looking next year and everything and, and beyond that, but is, is that also a factor? Well, it's dead period right now, so all we really have is the exposure, okay. right, that I was talking about earlier. So we can't get on the road anymore, um, which until January, but you come off the road, off the bowl cage, you see us on TV, you know, when, when you're hitting up those guys that you're recruiting now, which is a big deal. What do you want them to see when they watch Temple football when you're on that national stage? Yeah, I mean, the same thing that we've done all year, which is run around, fly around, play hard-nosed, tough football in the right way, uh, which is something that I think uh, we've been working for. Now. We've been practicing hard, too. And uh, they're going to be ready to hit another team, I can tell you, pretty soon. But right now, they're, they're out there flying around, which I was, uh, I was happy to see the last couple of days. Today was a little, we'll get them back going tomorrow. But guys that haven't played a whole lot, uh, what do these extra practices do? Uh, yeah, so like I was talking about the running back room. Yeah. So like a guy like Sadie, he still has a game left, so we can play and we can still redshirt him. So, uh, you know, he could get himself 
into the mix where he earns carries. So that is what he's fighting for. A guy like Jordan McGee, Yvonne Rigby, all these guys are getting themselves into play where they earn actual playing time, um, which will really, I mean, you, you end the season that way, makes off season a lot easier when you get a little taste of it. What's your sort of role uh, when you start looking at Matt and Quincy in particular and when conversations with them might happen about the pros? Uh, we've been in conversations with that. We've, we've contacted the NFL. The NFL has gotten back to us. I'm not going to share any of that with you guys because uh, those are personal decisions that they have to make. But we've given them – all I do, guys, is I give them all the information and say this is your decision. I support it either way. Obviously, I'd love to have both of them back, but that's not my role in this case. It's to, we're trying to grow young men up, right? Part of it is making decisions when you grow young men. Take a look at all the, all the information and then make the best decision for you. And that's what my role in this is. I have one more piece of information to get them. When I get them that, then they'll have it all and they'll make their decision in time. You know, I, I don't put a time on it. I don't talk to them about that you know, that it's theirs to make. Uh, you mentioned Brett before. Uh, do you know wh where you'll, what position ultimately he might be filling Ooh. in? Uh, Brett Garrison, Ray, if he's going to join, how you're yeah, going to move so, that around. Yeah, I'll get, yeah I, I should have said that one more, Cass. So Brett's going to go into that Bubo or outside linebacker position. Tyler Yelk's going to go back to safeties. And Melvin Rice is going to go to corners. And that's how it will be in the bowl game. Right when we uh, talked to the players, they said it was more important to them to – play a power five team in the bowl game and then go to Florida or something like that. What does that say about those guys and your team? Uh, they love a challenge, right? I think that's what it says to them. That's what I love about these guys. You put a challenge out there, um, you know, they kind of get their fur up a little bit. I like that. So <clears throat> it's been a fun group that way. You know what I mean? It's been a really fun group to coach. I, I wish, I, I've said it a million times, I wish I had more time with these seniors. Not because, like, these linebackers, they're, they're ready to go and get into the NFL draft. Like, they don't, you know, need a – I just won't like to be around them. You know, they're such, you know, good, positive guys. How much more time do you spend sort of going to school on UNC, right? Coaches sort of have a weekly habit in terms of the prep for the, uh, for the opponent. How much – with all this extended time, how much more homework is there just a filming lot. that kind of stuff? I mean, you're going to dig in like it's the first opponent of the year – find out as much information as you can. You don't just do a four game breakdown on guys like this, you do all 12, because um, you got the time and uh, uh, you do it all. You know, that's, that's the only way I've ever done it. Um, and I'm sure every place I've been has done it that way. Just a you, talk, you talked about the, um, the information from the NFL. Is that from talent evaluators? Like where they, where they like have- Yeah, so the NFL has a situation where you can go and ask them to do an evaluation on early entries. And they have a whole process for that, where they get it out to the teams and the teams get it back. And then the NFL league office gets you their evaluations and, um, and tells you, and, and really they do a couple verbal, they tell you what kind of each evaluation was. And then they put on paper, on league uh, paper, they say it's either a first, second round grade or it's a return to school grade. Um, so that, that's very specific, um, you know, on that. So for the first two rounds, a return to play. Oh, they, okay. So if, if it's like a third round grade, that's... They get return to play. Yeah, yeah. And, and, they, and they line out in there in that sheet that there are a lot of different factors that can move your grade up or down, which is obviously we all know that. What would it mean to, to, to win one? I mean, you obviously did well. Yeah, I know. Like just I'd love to win a bowl game. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, is there anything like that, you just, like, that you've learned from just like prepping or things like, I'm not yeah. going to do that again and do this? Do yeah, this. I've learned not to do anything the same because none of it's worked. You know, it's what I've really learned. Um, you know, you're constantly evaluating, right? On, on the, like, my biggest thing is I'm constantly evaluating. Uh, my schedule, my organizational skills, am I putting people in the right position to succeed? That's a daily thing. And so, I mean, we got done with the bowl game last year. I, I called around, found out what people did. I, you know, we're going into bowl prep this year, called around. I got an opportunity, which I, I couldn't have told you was planned in any way, shape or form. Um, but we were at the National Football Foundation dinner here a week ago and, uh, 
I stepped out and lo and behold, Coach Alvarez stepped out. And, um, you know, I, I know him some, I don't know him real great. I have a ton of respect for him, obviously. But I got an opportunity to have Barry Alvarez's undivided attention for two hours. And, um, you know, we got into bowl stuff. So there is some definite things I took from that um, and applying right here. He's he a pretty good bowler, if you haven't noticed. Um, so, uh, you know, you'd be a damn fool to take some of that advice, right? Some of those bowl games, did you, when you evaluated afterwards, how many of the, you know, those losses were, boy, I just totally didn't have this team ready? Yeah, I, there's only one that I would say that uh, to, and that was 2013 uh, with Utah State. No, and all due respect to Utah State out at the Point City Bowl. Uh, Matt Wells, who's now a Texas Tech, good friend. Uh, they played better than us that night, but that would be the one. I really thought coming off of, we were 12 and 0, we were in the championship game. We knew if we won the championship, we were going to the Fiesta Bowl. We were a pretty banged up team that year. Went out, Bowling Green did a great job, beat us, and we were down. And I was worried about the offense. So I put a lot of time into getting, you know, the offense going, or I'm sorry, the defense. I put a lot of time getting the defense going because they gave up a lot that night, right? Yeah, kind of trying to get them back and get them playing. And I thought the offense, you know, we had Jordan Lynch at the time, pretty good football player. Well, you know, I was in there too, but um, flipped it on his ear. And we, I think we lost 21-20 or 2017 or something like that, or 2013. Um, and, uh, it, you know, looking back on it, he said, well, I, I allocated my time wrong, you know, because defense came out and played really well, which is good allocation of time. Offense did not play well, which is a bad allocation of time. So that'd be the one. Sorry, real quick recruiting question for you. I know he's a little bit short, but Lee McCarlo, what do you like about him? I mean, he was a pretty good tackling machine, the numbers he put up at Wilson were pretty impressive. Yeah, he's, um, he's a uh, weird, I think Mark, you asked it earlier, you know, where are you starting these guys? You know, he's a guy, he can play safety, he can play linebacker, he can play outside linebacker, he can play running back. Um, he's just a good football player. And uh, we will see. We're going to start in position with him at the outside backer, which is really like a safety. Um, and then we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. He's a good player. Uh, broadly speaking, are you guys pretty healthy? I know you ended the season really banged up a corner. Everybody was kind of limping out there. Yes. Numbers um, were way down. Yes. In general speaking, we have put the pads on, had the pads on here for a little bit, so there are normal bumps and bruises there. But there's... Uh, Nobody that if we had to play tomorrow that would be out. By the way, you talked about I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Um, Clary also, he's a guy that hasn't played a lot of football. So do you see He's one of those guys, one of those temple guys that's gonna come in here and he is gonna go ahead by the time he's a fourth or fifth year player, he's gonna look completely different. He's gonna be completely different because the the curve for him is so steep because he hasn't played a lot of football, right? So, uh, he, classic like Temple guy is what I say on that. I'm really excited about him too. Hey, sorry guys, you guys started out.